Hey guys, welcome to Imagine More with Themby, surviving motherhood together, making it up as we go. So I just wanted to chat a little bit about mothers, about moms who have one child versus maybe three plus children. Maybe what I'm about to say is true for you for your second child. I have three children. I just wanna talk about the differences between child one versus child three, how I parented differently. And I wonder if you had the same experience. <laughs> So we all know or have experienced or have been a first time mom who strives for perfection when it comes to their child from the pregnancy to the birthing process to after, you know. And then when it came to the third child, everything was old hat. I knew what to expect, what to get, what not to get, what you need, what you really don't need and you can do without. The baby journal. Oh, he rolled over. Oh yeah, yeah, that's when he took his first steps. And that's when he said no for the first time. And you're so excited to share with everyone and you're just like, look, and this is when he just, look how cute, see? Your youngest asks you a question about a milestone. Well, when was the time I took my first step? You know, that age when all the kids walk, it was, you know, fast. You're so good. Being particular about who holds your baby and how your baby is held. Make sure you hold his, support his neck so his head doesn't wobble all around. Cradle him, put put your arm, no, no, like behind his, yeah, hold, got him? Here, I'll take him back, thanks. Sometimes you get to a point where you don't even care who holds your kids, you could ask a stranger. You're in the supermarket and your kid's on your shoulder and you have to reach into your purse to pay and you're like, uh, excuse me, uh, can you just hold him for a second? Yeah, thanks. I've never done that, just, honestly, I've never done that. I've never, I really have, that. What foods? your child eats. I've made you some squash, butternut, mush, homemade by mommy, all organic. By your third child, you're just like, oh, you're teething? Here's that chicken bone. Get a good bite of that neck. Gnaw at that bone, baby. You're doing good. Oh, look at, oh, let me get that gravy off your, okay, good boy. Watching them to make sure they're still breathing. I don't see his chest moving up and down. Oh, there's his friend, he's alive. I can watch you all day long. That gets old really quick because as soon as you turn to walk out of the room and the floor creaks, they're up. Let me tell you how you put that baby in the room. He starts to cry. You're like, he'll fall asleep eventually. He'll be good. He's fine. It's okay to cry yourself to sleep sometimes. I do it. Why can't you? The toys your child uses. You've got sensory toys, and toys that light up, toys that teach him how to speak, toys for the playpen, toys for the crib, toys for your car. Your house is full of toys, stuff everywhere. Those toys, please. Child number three, here, sit on the floor and play. Here's a box. No shame. Don't judge me. Mommy and toddler class. Take your child to the class and, be, and then you judge all the other moms. I would let my child run around like that. She doesn't even wipe his nose. It's so snotty. Ugh. Bump the classes. Can I just have a play date so I can talk to another mom and like, you know, let him play and have some adult conversation like a real human being? Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Clothes your baby wears. So for my first child, I actually had five baby showers. Five. And I had clothes, so many clothes, that I would change the child throughout the day just to make sure he didn't grow out of the clothes and he got to wear everything. Hand-me-downs. You can never go wrong with hand-me-downs. You had hand-me-downs as a child. What makes them so special? They don't know the difference. Take that stuff out of the cupboard, out of the closet, out of the basement trash bags, wherever you have them stored, give them a wash, and throw them on the kid. Brand new. It's new to them, so it's new. And then there's the art. You're old enough to color for the first time and you framed it where you've put it on the fridge, you've laminated it so they can last forever in the memories, in the archives of your life. My child drew this. Oh, that that's for me? Oh, babe, thanks, that's so pretty. Oh, I love the colors you use. Oh, you did that with your teacher? For my Mother's Day gift, that's so special. Thanks, babe, Mwah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, all right, you go play and I'll, I'll just tidy up, okay? Okay, yeah, uh, mm, and trash. Yeah, I did, I put it in the trash. There's no more room in the inn. I saw it. I appreciated it, we talked about it, and now it goes away forever. So here's the irony of my situation. I was not the first child, and I remember looking at pictures of my sister and seeing how many pictures there were. There were albums full of stuff and all these memories, and I was like, where's mine? And I remember thinking, I made a vow to myself, I will never, 
ever do that to my child. If I have my first child, I would do just as much for the first child so, and the third child or the fourth child to make them know that they were loved. So when they look back, they do not see the discrepancy and I have failed miserably. Failed it, not nail that. My child is none the wiser. I do love my child, but is his book finished? No, I'm gonna own that. Anyway, so I just find it really ironic and you know, I did not follow through with my promise, but that's okay. I think I have wonderful kids, if I may say so myself, which I am saying so. I have wonderful kids. My kids are great. I love them. All right, guys, I would love to know what the difference is in child one versus your last child and how it changed for you. Please comment in the comment section below, like this video and subscribe for more videos. You can find me on Instagram and YouTube at Imagine More with Thembi. Hope to see you guys again. Take care. Bye. So, yay me.